guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to today's Captain's Blog. It's 12.52 hours on Friday, January 23rd, 2015. And this is our very own Josh Spencer, who is made of awesome. Now, I made you a promise. You came through on the deal. So, you have earned cake. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike in most places in the world, at the Geek Group, the cake is not a lie. So you have earned cake. I didn't know that I was eating cake until after I did it. Well, see, do it again. You'll get more cake. <laughs> and this particular cake is actually quite handy for you to have at this moment because okay. you have a birthday coming up in your family. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. I do my homework. How did you know that? Tell your daughter I said happy birthday. <laughs> she don't understand English yet. But... <laughs> Good job and thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so what you got going on? Oh, All kinds of things. Okay. We're over here today cleaning the pump. Thanks to the magical mystery and marvel of Sam, we were able to get the face off, and we are now doing the goop cleaning phase. Goop. Goop. Goop is great. Okay. You having fun there? Oh, yes. Hey, Will. Hey, what? This, is, this is the glamorous life we lead. <laughs> All the people on the internet think we have it like just awesome. Yeah. yeah. There is actually a rather famous video of me, because like shortly before we made this video, there was people on the internet. The the haters like to come up with some pretty impressive stuff. And one of the guys is talking about how I secretly pocket all the money from the geek group. Uh -huh. I am a massive embezzler. It's all a scam. It's all a cult. And I had a condo in Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure, you can, dude, you can have all my Hawaiian condos. And, uh, like, shortly after that, we had to do the big Project Kevin equipment autopsy, which was a robot about the size of Jeff. Uh -huh. And there's a video of me. I, I have a big disc of plate steel that's crazy. Thing. It's like a 200-pound piece of steel. Mm -hmm. And it's covered in bearing grease, which is basically, think, 30-year-old brown Vaseline. Yeah and I'm scraping it off with a putty knife, just huge amounts of it, and smacking it into a, a bucket. And I just made a comment of, this is the glamorous life right. I lead. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're living the glamor, you're living the dream. Welcome to the Geek Group. Takes a lot of fun before we get to the real fun. We get to do the real fun in a couple hours, and at the end of all this, this damn thing might work. Hey, Casey, I got a bearing on here you're gonna need to attend to. No, not just pulling it out like it's going to need lube and stuff. There's a bearing in there, and I've just completely douched it in solvent. Is it at all? Huh? It, I'm looking at the rollers. Is it notchy at all? Notchy? Is it grind at all? I haven't touched it. There's a bearing right there. Which has focus issues. There we go. There's the bearing. I just want to make sure it's going to be okay. How are you doing, sir? Uh, just fucking delighted. Question, though, for the, about this right here. Yes, so obviously you have to clean the inside. Thank you. I would have never grasped that concept. <laughs> what? Um, I know you couldn't just soak this in water, but is there any reason why you couldn't soak this in a um, non-hazardous metal chemical to break up all that? There is only one reason why we can't do that. Why is that? The machine you want exists. It's called a parts washer, and we own one. And it is exactly the perfect thing for what you're doing. It's right there. Also, the motor's burned out. And the motor's burned out in it. No, I was just referring to more along the lines of like this shit in here, you know. Yeah, that's that's exactly what you want a parts washer for, and it's sitting right there. Okay. So what we do is we go through a lot of paper towels and spritz. Okay. That's, yeah. It's okay though. I went in the uh, the locker room and I stole everybody's toothbrush. So you're set. Yeah, but this is actually doing more. I mean, well, it's getting loosening it up, but. Not really you, as far as cleaning it was. Yeah, you loosen it up with the brush and then wipe it out with the thing. Yeah. All right. You'll get there. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm, I'm going to be eating cleaning. my lunch off of this. I'm okay with that. It's going to be that clean. I'm, I'm really okay with that. As long as your lunch doesn't have anything that's going to cause it to rust. Mayonnaise? Bologna is really bad. <laughs> Especially on a hot summer. Bologna will take the, the, the paint right off a car. Especially really? On a summer. Yeah, yeah. You want to mess up somebody's car, go, go buy a whole pack of just plain old Oscar Mayer bologna. It comes in a little discs. Just lay them on somebody's car. 
takes the paint right off. That's hilarious, I had no idea. Another yeah. one that's really good for that is brake fluid. Brake fluid does dirty, dirty things to paint. The face detection circuit, you know how it brings up the little square on the camera screen? Mm -hmm. The face detection circuit is going nuts on this fan blade right here. I don't know why, but it keeps, like, I'm, I'm back here and I keep getting a little square popping up. It really wants to shoot that fan blade. I think there may be the soul of its creator in the fan blade. So when Avalon's up and running, then you'll start using the, <laughs> the machine to wash off parts and will still be a paper towel. Um, once the VSL is up and running, we'll have the parts washer going again. This room's in the middle of major remodel, which is why that side of the room is packed with shit, and this side is pretty much empty. In three weeks, you will see magic happen. When's the last time you were here? Last week. Okay. Last week, Friday. Last week, Friday, but and I was doing video editing stuff. Okay, but what color was this room last week, Friday? I didn't say what it meant. Okay, because those hadn't been painted yet. All the blue and the gray is new. And this week we finished the paint and we did the airline and we did the cable tray, which now goes all the way over to that corner. Next week we're doing floor. What's that? What's what? The big fucking sphere. The big, the big ball? Yes. That's a Death Star. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> it actually has a dent in the other side. So that, that's the Death Star. It's going to be a giant disco ball. Are you fucking with me? I am not fucking with you. We're going to make a five-foot disco ball, because <laughs> we can. That's actually pretty cool. I will give you that. I'll give you credit for that. I, I just, I got to do a fundraiser to get the mirrors. It's not even that expensive. I said, look, there's only one way I'm interning here, if you bring back disco. Oh, disco's fucking dead, and it should be. But I'll bring back five-foot disco ball, because we have a laser lab, and that's just cool. I'm talking Commodores and Bee Gees all night. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was way more of an Alan Parsons ELO kind of guy. <laughs> I like a little ABBA. I'm assuming you're picking up on my sarcasm. No, no. And now that you've said that on the blog, what's your email address? <laughs> well, uh, that won't be hard to find because really, how many William Benoits can there be? By the way, that's spelled B-E-N-O-I-T, right? Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, there aren't that many in Grand Rapids. That's true. So There's not even me in Grand Rapids. Really? Only when I come up to work. Okay. Where do you live? Kalamazoo. Oh, God. You're one of <laughs> them. Everyone says that. I have a really good reason to say that. Have you seen the men's room here? Yeah. Okay. That's the level of hatred I have for the city of Kalamazoo. Wait, so you don't allow heat there? Huh? No, have you seen the sign in the men's room? Over yeah. by the high voltage lab? You go in the men's room there. Right right over the shit house there is a big sign that says, Welcome to the city of Kalamazoo. We do keep us this right now so we can share. Yep. Batman, do we have another spritz bottle with the, the stuff? I just wanted um, to give Chris shit. I, I have lots of empty spritz bottles. I'm just kidding. I am not as fast as this industrious young man over here. Who I have a fucking decade on. We'll be back. Forklift FPV, yo! All right, that's good. Hey, oh. Come on in a little. So is Terry Bosco with two Z's or one? Two. Stop. He's a drummer for corn these days. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Corn. Yeah, I know what corn is. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to go inside there. You can try, but I think you're going to have to take me inside there. Oh, wow, he did a really good job on that. That 
that all you got? Yeah. Yeah, see? How many zip ties can you reach? Maybe two. You get your big ass up here and lean out and keep talking shit, fat man. I still gotta go on the inside. I got two, but I can't get the third. The third is about seven feet out from me. You don't even know. So, who do you think the greatest living drummer is today? My vote is for Terry Bazio, but we have we have a discussion going on. He's talking about Buddy Rich and shit. Are we, and talking, about, just, are we talking about like strictly jazz? Or are we talking about collision. Like, I see it. Okay. Are we talking about like jazz or drummers in general? Dude? We can go either way. Pretty much all the absolute best drummers work in jazz. Terry Bazio. He plays for Korn, but he's a jazz fusion drummer. I mean, but, all right, now, if we're getting into, like, death metal and black metal, there's some amazing drummers out there, man. No, there's some amazing fast drummers, but a level of technical precision That's exists. That's I'm getting at, yeah. too, dude. It's a um, totally different scene. There's a lot of guys who have this, you know, un unimaginably good fast twitch muscle, and they can do 128th notes with their fucking pinky toe. Yeah, I and, yeah. But, um... Watch Terry Basio play an ostinato and tell me he isn't the best drummer you've ever seen. Like Mark Lopez, formerly of Opeth, Trim from Emperor. Those are great drummers. Yeah! Uh, he started the conversation with God of Drummer. Have you ever seen them? Huh? He started the conversation with the same God of Drumming. Now he switched it to great. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess concert drummer is seen as well. I really, I don't, I don't do concerts at all, really. Really? I worked technical crew in that world for too long to, in, like, concerts for me these days are pretty much lost. I never go anywhere. The last concert I went to was actually uh, Bobby McFerrin, and that was awesome. I loved it. I live for concerts, man. It's what... yeah, I'm, I'm a studio guy. Come on in. I saw Bobby McFerrin out in uh, Ada a year or two ago. Okay. It was awesome. Stop. He's really cool in concert. And I saw, um, oh shit, who's the lead singer of Black Flag? Henry Rollins. Yeah, I saw Henry Rollins in concert at the Orbit Room uh, about a year ago, two years ago. Okay. He was pretty cool. From the looks of it, yeah. Any particular reason? Good. What? Oh. Quote me on that, but that's what I heard. Okay. So that's why it's in a state of flux. If it's not closing down or it closed down. You know what they need to bring back? The reptile house. I never went there, man. That oh. Was, that was slightly before my time, dude. I, I saw Erebon radar there. People have told me, like, it was much of a good thing a shithole. It was so nasty. It's everything you wanted out of the reptile house. It was awesome. I used to live like six blocks away. I used to go to skeletons back then. <laughs> Never been there. Uh, it was a coffee joint. A guy would have a lot of punk shows there because I used to be part of the DIY scene back in the day. And he just got a little too preachy for me. And then all of the um, DIY shows ended up moving down to the DAC, the Division Arts, the Division Avenue Arts Cooperative. There was a lot of good shows that I've seen there, man. Okay. And then just went to house shows too. So then I moved out of the punk scene because it just became too formulaic. Like say something political, say something social. Applause, play song, rinse and fucking repeat. And I want shit to move me, you know, energy wise. So, I've just been a fan of like a lot of music throughout Grand Rapids because fuck, West Michigan has a wealth of talent. Yeah. Variety for music. Well, help me 
help me captivate them and get them involved in a you know community-based recording studio, and now we've got something. Well, a good portion of them actually have their own recording studio. Not like this. I understand that. <laughs> but I understand it. Don't get me wrong, but you know, they have their own studios, like the band. Uzenza and Apostles, which are basically... Yeah, but these guys are doing stuff out of their house, right? Yes. Well, don't you know that home taping is killing music? No, it's not. Don't you think it's helping with, like... Oh, God, kids. No, no, kids. no, 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 no. You missed, you missed it. It went right over your head. You said it, home it, taping. Home taping is killing music. Okay, I thought you were being serious as far as the long lines of, like... Uh, no, it's a, it's a very famous old... Never mind. Like, where's the beat? Comment if you know where home taping is killing music comes from. Sorry, dude. We'll be back. Was it before 1981? I'm not talking to you anymore. Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to the Geek Group. It's 1407 hours, and it's time for viewer mail, which today is going to be particularly awesome. But we'll get to that. The marvelous Kelly is joining us for viewer mail. And Maggie. Maggie's in the front. Joe Johnson, Crash Cart, sent us a silencer for the shot back. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? I have 20 of them on our website. This exists. Okay. This exists. They actually work not as, it's, this works to a shot back as a silencer or suppressor, as does a silencer or suppressor work for a, a, a weapon, like a handgun. They do not work like, like, it's not like James Bond where, okay, it's, it's, it goes from ah! down to ah! so it, it helps. It helps a lot when you have like three people. Who yeah, like when, when you've got like five of the damn things rolling, it makes a hell of a difference. China Post! are perfect as USB powered be if you have an art department that doesn't have heat and everybody has computers. These are for you. Yay. Spread them among your people. We are so happy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my intern right now. Shoot her. She's a happy girl. You're oh. holding the camera. Give Rose a pair. Rose. Lower black. Rose wants black. Me. Flannel plaid with a beard. Cherry blue or black. If that were an option, then yes. <coughs> what is that weird smell? Oh, you're the weird smell. My e-juice is weird. That's what that is? Right? That is strawberry? truly horrible. It's like peach and green juice. It's smell? truly horrible. Some new juice. Okay, so I have a security to checked box with Chinese characters on it. And I've been expecting this. It actually got here impressively fast. This is done through our sponsorship from Quinn's Vape, who you should all be checking out because this is awesome. I have, in recent memory, given away a few e cigs to get people to quit smoking. And a lot of people have asked me, what, what, is, what model of e-cig should I get, you know, for somebody who's quitting smoking? Here's your answer. This is, in my opinion, and I know opinions are like assholes, but this is my opinion. I'm the guy who's holding them all, so there. The absolute end-all, be-all best e-cig for getting somebody to quit smoking hardcore right away, instant transition, 
this is what you want. The Kangertech EVOD. I prefer the EVOD 2 personally, but even today, right now, I'm rolling a classic EVOD 1. Um, the big difference with the EVOD 2 is it's, it's, it's tiny refinement. It's nothing major if you're, if you're new to E6. But these, all of these are made possible through my very good friends at Quinn's Vape Supply. And they are here. They're awesome, Quinn. Everything is cool. You can sign off with the dude. It's kosher. Um, these are going to be given to volunteers and staff. That's where I'm focusing. Okay, I'm not, so don't, don't write me and say, send me an e-cig. No, I'm not going to send you an e-cig because I have about 10,000 people asking for them. This is the one you want to buy. They are not expensive. Okay, you can, you can get these. In fact, you might be able to even get these through Quinn's Vape. Check with Quinn. If he doesn't sell this exact one, I'm sure he has a similar model that he recommends for his thing, and I trust his judgment because he's Quinn. But for all Geek Group staff and volunteers, if you are smoking analogs, your days are numbered and I am coming for you because you're going to get one of these, which are very, very nice. And if once I give all of these away, which is only a matter of time, I will get more. So if you want to help me get more people to quit smoking, let me know. Comment because I could use your support because this is not a cheap enterprise to do. But you know what? It's cheaper than cancer. So that's viewer mail for today. Check out Quinn's vape. And I have, I have a message. He sent me a thing. Let me see if this is appropriate for viewer mail or if it's just Quinn sending me midget porn again. You do that a lot? No! We've posted on our social media page for people to tune in to VM Live today. Can't wait to watch. So, share that on Facebook and stuff. Alright, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. That's today's adventures in viewer mail. And now we're going to go make a video with a lot of goop. We'll be back after lunch. Thank you. Like All right, 16, 20 hours in the shoot begins. You guys ready? Actually, Batman, find me noon. Oh, I need gloves. What, what, who's the part that left me one glove? Batman, what? I am not Michael Jackson. That's I only have one glove. Should I go retrieve one? I'll some mail with yeah, supply request for you. Alright, you can do that. Wait, you getting something? Hey, Moose? No, go, go. What? Order gloves. Send me a supply request, like everybody else. I will do this, but it doesn't help. Supply request. Someone has one glove, they can still say, When you're ready, you have to get another glove. You want lube or not? I want lube, but it's got to be a light. Do you have any three in one oil? Oh, just want something that light. Yeah, I could Yeah, I want, I want something that light. Give me some three in one oil, and I'll use that as assembly lube. All right, I got to cut through the scene, you got it. That's okay, we haven't started rolling. Right, that's just set before you do. do you need How much do you have left to do Woo! in there? Um really fifteen percent. To do like the top to do the top like brick on the ladder basically. Alright. And then the corner behind the air compressor. Can you knock that out today? Probably. If we, that if depends we, on the nature of the shoe. If we get yeah. done, this won't take that long. If we get done painting that, I can move the Laguna in there. I can, I can start putting the room back together. It won't. It, this will only be the first coat, so you want a second coat. Yeah, do a second coat, but it won't take long. The second coat always goes way faster than the first. Right. I still have to do the first in succession, and then the second coat I'll be able to move yeah. through. My helpers weren't as helpful as I had hoped yesterday. I know your pain. <laughs> Rolling on white. Tilt it down a little bit. It's easy. Right off the bat. And probably you can zoom in a bit. Right about there. You want me to bring it down a little bit? Not. I'm a wide shot from the top of the side of the shoulders. 
Also, when it's fully running, don't put your digit in again. It's more vacuum this time. More efficient. Okay. All right, we're back. It is now several days later because we had to call in our awesome engineer, Sam, to do one of those little things where you look at that five seconds later and go, really? That was, that was how it was done? So we had that experience. But it is now all clean, thanks to a massive amount of help from all the interns. Everything is cleaned inside and out, and we're ready to do the official assembly. Now, once or twice in the two or three videos that we've made, I have done something and gotten one or two people who may have commented and said, Oh my god! So in order to avoid that, I'm going to just outright ask your assistance and your input. Because I have never assembled a vacuum pump before. I understand the mechanical side of how to put this together. We're going to do that, and it's going to be fun. What I don't know is the exact perfect oil to use for this exact pump. But one of you does. So please comment, let us know, and when that happens, we'll take it apart and we'll oil it properly. Today I'm just going to put a little bit of a very light machine oil in it in order to just do the assembly. I'm going to think of it like assembly loop so that I can spin it up and show you it working and work well so I won't damage any seals or anything. But for the real oil, let me know. We'll get the right stuff. Okay? <coughs> Penis! Alright, so that being said. Alright, so with that, let's put this together. Now the first thing I have to do is put the very large rotor back inside it. Now this has been superbly cleaned. I'm going to double check everything and make sure they're all nice and shiny. Oh! Oh, the guys did a great job. Okay. 
So, all I gotta do is pick up that giant thing and stick it. Oh, wow! That's got a heft to it. I don't know how they got this in here the first time. Not quite, but very close. Okay. We need to help it along a bit. Ha! That's the trick. Okay. Figured that all out all on my own. Figured it all out. I gotta take it back out. But not all the way. Before I put that in there, we used a solvent based cleaner and degreaser. I have a knife, please, from somebody. Thank you. I want to specifically put some lube in this bearing. vintage oil. God knows how old it is. I'm just going to put some lube right in here. If you look right down in the middle, you'll be able to see this. I'm just going to flood it with that light little oil. Alright. Now let's try this again. And we're in. Yay! Okay. Pause. Ah! I mean, did you get me? I have one other pair. You really need to go. Thank you. Assembly of this bit here next. Because I want to make sure that's all tight and in there and good before we go into anything else. So, I'll leave the fan is next. And magically appearing is the Allen wrench I'll need for the fan. Uh, this goes on this way. Simple set screw. And this is, of course, the finest quality of impeller. Okay. Wow, that move, that moves way better than it did before. Key. This piece. We have 
to line up just right. And remember the order of operations. This goes on. This way. And this sets through it. This is, this is weird. You gotta put this on first. And this has to line up with the keyway. My key in position and everything's happy there. Then you pick this up over it. And three of the four holes have threads. No, two of the four holes have threads. Well, I can, Chris. The two non-threaded holes line up with the two holes on the pole. You have holes that go through and pull the pole towards the back. Okay, do I know which other special there, belt? They were Huh? This? So, we've got our pulley in place. Now this is a weird arrangement because these three wedge together with the key to lock everything in place. So it's kind of, kind of weird. And we grab these two bolts, and this has obviously been redone because the bolts are two different lengths, but we don't really care. As long as the bolt is long enough to go through and stick out the other side a little bit, after it's going out the other side, it doesn't really care how far it's going to the other side. And what this lets you do is adjust the, the in and out location a bit. But we don't really care about that too terribly much. Because we can adjust it in other ways. I got so much stuff in here. I am the luckiest man. down evenly. And that snugs everything right up. assembly once again, which is pretty cool. So that's everything that has to happen up front. Let's 
go back to the back. Cool. Now I'm going to put a little oil in here. Just let that work around. And now we put our veins back in. And these really should just flop around. Now, see how that's different than it was before? Look at how the vein moves. We come out here and we fall and it drops down into the, and now remember the end plate would hold this in place. But as it comes down, it falls, and now it takes all this air that's coming in this pipe and watch. We'll add the second vein, and you can see this in action. We've created a cavity here. Now this drops. Now these would be pushed against the outer wall by centrifugal force while this is spinning. So now you've got an air cavity, and it's, it's big, and it gets bigger as it goes this way. And then it starts to shrink because we're compressing that air a little bit, and these fall back into place, and it would, because the cavity shrinks, pushes it out there. And now you can see the pump doing what it was supposed to do back then, which is really cool. See, and they're all moving around and happy. Okay, so I'm adding just a little bit of oil here, make sure everything keeps moving, so I don't want to damage anything. Alright, now, we add the next bearing assembly on this side, which is the big back cover. Got a bearing on the outside and nothing that I can lubricate from the inside. Uh oh. Okay, I'm gonna flood that with oil when we get to that point. First, I gotta figure out this goes like that. Okay. Everything still moves just like it's supposed to. We're not quite the position yet. I need So now we just put all these back in. I think it's a good problem. Um, I think we're right now, right? Hey, Batman? Yeah. Can you give me the impact?
It's inch and a half. I know it's inch and a half. But I'm covered in blood. Come here. Muscle that off. It's just plastic. It's about to go right up. Take that to back one. There's blood on the set floor. Blood! This is my art, and I bleed for it. <laughs> 